Chris Mirabal's passion for aging led him to co-found Novos Labs, where he is now the CEO. Novos Labs is a human longevity company addressing the 10 mechanisms of aging through its innovative formulations. Their scientific advisory team includes Dr. George Church, Dr. Matt Cablin, and Dr. Pamela Maha. With that, let me start the interview. Hi, Chris. You are the co-founder and CEO of Novos Labs. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and it's great having you on our channel today. Thank you. It's great to be here, Richard. So, Chris, can you give me some background on yourself and what kind of led you to go into aging? As Sure. So I've been interested in health since I was 12 years old. I started to exercise. I had picked up an issue of Men's Health magazine and was inspired by the people in that magazine. And I wanted to be like them. And I was a scrawny 12 year old. So I, I installed a pull up bar in my basement. And every day I would come home and start exercising. Um, I actually started to follow a, a quote unquote healthy diet at the time as well, which was the low fat, high protein diet that everyone was prescribing. Uh, but then I was suddenly stopped in my tracks when I was 16 years old. I suddenly had a seizure while on a school trip in New York City. And next thing I knew, I woke up with blood all over me. I had severed my tongue and it turned out it was all caused uh, by a brain tumor. And that experience really shaped me tremendously. It, it caused me to ask myself a lot of existential questions that a lot of people don't ask until their later years of life. Um, and I was asking them when I was a teenager about what I wanted out of my life and what is, what is the purpose for life. And, um, and I, I, I grew to a point where I was actually appreciating difficulty and pain in life because I was here to be able to experience it. And I could have, it could have been lights out. I could have been gone but I appreciated everything. Um, it was, it was a, a blessing in disguise, I would say. But um, it also planted a seed for me. And um, in, in the shorter term, it, it really affirmed my, my decision to become an entrepreneur where I wanted to create and kind of shape my life and shape the world. Um, but in the longer term, it planted the seed uh, where it transformed my interest in health from one that was admittedly purely superficial. I just wanted to, you know, look good for the girls in, in class that I had a crush on um, to one that was more biologically based. Like, how can I prevent myself from ever having a brain tumor ever again or any other chronic illness for that matter? And so I wanted to take things into my own hands. I started researching genetics and my own um, uh, uh, genetics as well to try to understand what may have caused the brain tumor. And that just led me down many different paths that eventually uh, brought me to wanting to start a longevity company. Why did you start Novos? Why do you fa feel that it's different? So you needed to start a new one. And kind of what is the mission and the goal of the company? Great questions. So I uh, fast forward to my my early mid 30s. I was volunteering at NYU Medical Center, which is where my brain tumor was removed. I had promised myself when I was being treated that I would one day give back and so much time had passed that I was still single, didn't have any kids. And so it's like if I don't do it now, I'll never have time to do it. So I started to volunteer at the hospital. And one day as I was leaving, I saw a poster on the wall for the mitochondrial summit where doctors who I was familiar with the work of, like Dr. David Sabatini at MIT, who mm -hmm. studies mTOR as an example, I was familiar with th these doctors. And I already had this idea in the back of my mind, like I'd like to do something in longevity. So I attended that event and other biotech conferences. And essentially what I was trying to figure out was how far along are we with something that as a consumer, I could take today and give to my loved ones, my family and my friends. And there was really nothing out there that I felt was was meeting the potential. So I asked these doctors about natural substances that wouldn't require FDA approval. Um, and I was surprised by how optimistic they were about these substances. Um, I was surprised mainly because I, I was kind of biased by the medical doctor perspective, which is oftentimes like, oh, you'll create expensive urine if you take supplements, right? They're kind of biased to the pharmaceutical side of things. But scientists study a molecule for what it is, whether man-made or not, and they let the results speak for themselves. And when I hear that they are very optimistic about these substances, I realize that there is a lot of potential that is untapped 
And everything that's being done in the biotech, sorry, in the, in the longevity space at that point was biotech or pharma or really aggressive therapies like DNA modification and so on. And these are things that are so many years out, um, a lot more risky in the sense of uh, being tested in humans through multiple phases and, and seeing how it affects us over the course of decades. And uh, there was no like short-term solution uh, available. So that's why I decided that the, the opportunity was there for, for me to be able to create something different, something special that could really have an impact on people's uh, pace of aging. Right. So I understand it, it. it's a different corporate structure. It's not a for-profit or it, it, something like that. It, it, so we are technically a for-profit, but we're what's called a public benefit corporation. This was a decision I made at the very beginning, and it's it's something that some investors push back on, but I, I push back against them. <laughs> and uh, the, the reason for it is that the public benefit corporation gives us the ability to choose the public benefit over profits. So um, oftentimes, well, for all corporations, the fiduciary responsibility is profits first and shareholders first. In this case, of course, we have to be mindful of all stakeholders, including shareholders. We can't be reckless, but we can put the public interest before, before profit. So I wanted that in place so that we can make the decisions that are best for the public health at large. Um, and by extension, the people I love and care about and myself as well. I want to create products that are genuinely the best available um, and not thinking about profit first and foremost. So that might mean we include a more expensive ingredient. For example, we could have included a fisetin uh, concentrate instead of a fisetin extract. The fisetin extract is 10 times more expensive. Uh, there are many companies that will provide you a fisetin concentrate and they will mark it as if it's the same thing as an extract, but it's not. Uh, we went with the more expensive one, even though most consumers don't know the difference. So that's an example of putting um, our customer, in this case, um, first before, before profit.